evening, good evening, good evening. This is Elder Bowie, and I want to welcome you to Bible study on tonight. I'll be sitting in for Pastor Blue. So I want you to get you something to write with, some pen and paper. I think this is going to be an awesome word on tonight. I think it's going to challenge you, and I think it's going to challenge your mind frame. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. I'm not going to hold on. Father God, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you truly have made. I have decided that I will rejoice and be glad. In it. Lord God, we thank you for our time on tonight, Lord God. We pray that it's conducive to you. Now, Lord God, let the descending start right now and your increase flow up in me, Lord God. We want you on tonight. None of Brian, but all of you. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. So I won't be before you long, but I think this is are going to be a good word for you on tonight. Um, and if I had to put a particular title to it, it would be simply, Why Am I So Anxious? Why am I so anxious? And I'll be reading tonight from Philippians chapter 4. So if you turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse number 6. I'll give you a little time to get it. But we're going to start at verse number six. And it reads, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brother. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we can just be honest with ourselves, our thoughts are all over the place during this time of a pandemic. Uh, like my favorite rap group, the Ghetto Boys, would say, our minds is playing tricks on us. The mind is a powerful thing, and it's in our mind that we can become anxious. In our minds, we can make ourselves happy. In our minds, we can make ourselves sad. In our minds, we can make ourselves nervous. In our minds, we can be on an island with our spouses. In our minds, we can think we're going to die. In our minds is where we feel insecure. In our minds, is where we think we're handsome or pretty or just all that in a bag of chips. So it's in the mind that all these thoughts I have just mentioned occur. But the main one I want to talk about on today that's dealing with the mind is anxiety. Now, I believe that all of us can relate to this. Anxiety can be unpredictable. One minute you're fine. The next year swept in a wave of debilitating emotional and mental chaos. You take deep breaths. You close your eyes. You practice the calming physical responses like breathing techniques and just thinking about things that will take your mind off of it. Anxiety is no respect of a person. And no one is exempt from the trauma that comes with anxiety. And to make matters worse, we're living in a pandemic with an unstable government that is not concerned about the people, but more concerned about money and power. Now, that's a subject for a whole nother day, but keep that in your mind, friend. We're also living in a time where we are being victimized for the color of our skin. And as black individuals with children, we are scared for them to enjoy the normalcy of life because of the fear that when they leave the house, they will not walk back in that door again. So as of right now, during this pandemic, 
and doing all these things that's happening in the world today, all of us can say that we are on edge right now from anxiety and everything that's going on in the world on today. How many of my listeners today have dealt with some form of anxiety? Give me some high fives in your comments. Give me some high fives in your comments if you're just like me, because I've been dealing with some anxiety myself. Now, when we was little, we used to play this game called Bad Man Hit My Hand. Y'all remember that. <laughs> then after the hardest hit, it was on and popping. But it was during that time that our anxiety would build up. And we knew that when we hit that hand, that hard hand, that last time, and that man or that girl moved out the way, we knew then that it was on and popping. And the anxiety was building up from that because you knew that at that time you was finna fight. Anxiety can hit you in all type of ways, not knowing when you're going to pay your bills, going to a job interview. Uh, being in an abusive relationship, and so on. It can get so bad that you can get lightheaded and think you're going to pass out. That's why we have to be mindful of the physical trauma that it has on the body. Now, if you think about my brothers and sisters that's been locked up behind bars, being in prison alone will make you in, have high anxiety, and it'll make your anxiety so high that it can be through the roof. But think about it. They have to protect themselves at all times from the fear of getting raped and even killed. And most of them come out with symptoms like PTSD and anxiety from the experiences that they have in prison. So that was just a little context before we get into the content, as my pastor would say. So if we jump into the text, we have Paul writing to the church of Philippi from a jail cell. If any of you have ever been locked up, you know that in a jail cell, the only thing that you can do is think. And in those days, the conditions of the prison was horrible. It was dark. It had no light, unbearable cold, lack of water, cramped quarters, and the sickening stench from few toilets made sleeping difficult and waking hours miserable. Now listen to that. Don't miss that. It had few toilets. So that lets you know that if a toilet wasn't available, then they had to use the bathroom on their cells or on the ground. So actually Paul was in a cell that was damp. It was cold from no heating in the air. And he was sleeping in feces and urine. My God, that right there alone would throw your anxiety through the roof. And not to mention Paul was actually awaiting to be on trial. They said the conditions were so horrible that the people that were locked up in those cells in that day begged for death. So you can just imagine the anxiety levels Paul had when he was in the cell writing to the church of Philippi. I mean, we've, we've had some serious things in our lives, but I don't think that we've had something more serious than being locked up in a cell like Paul was writing to the church. And even in this, listen to me, and even in this, Paul was more concerned about the people than he was his current state of mind. Listen to that. Paul was more concerned about the people than he was his current state of mind. Now, I'm going somewhere with this, which brings me to my first point. And I want you to write this down. When God gives you an assignment, he will give you the strength to endure the trauma that comes with it. I don't think you heard me. Listen to that one more time, and I want you to write that down. When God gives you an assignment, he will give you strength to endure the trauma that comes with it. Listen to Paul in verse six and seven. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, 
which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul was on to something here. Even though Paul was locked in a cell, he was still on assignment. The people were worried about Paul, and Paul was worried about them also. But he knew that if God did it before, he would do it again. Oh, so what you saying, Elder Boy? What, what, what you saying? What you saying? The first, this is Paul's second time in prison. The first time Paul was in prison, he was in Philippi. Listen to that. Don't miss this. The first time Paul was in prison, he was in Philippi. Listen to Acts chapter 16 and listen to what it says. And it says, see that it was about midnight and Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises and the prisoners were listening to them. <laughs> this is good. This is good. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so great that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors opened and all the bonds were loosed. Listen to that. Listen to that. So Paul is saying, be anxious for nothing. You serve a God that when you praise his name, miracles will happen. Why? Because it happened where you were right there in the prison in Philippi. And you were witness to the power that God had when he brought me out of that the first time. So Paul is saying in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, putting the praise on, in other words, put a praise on it like it's already done. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So no matter the circumstances, Paul is saying, I can be in a jail cell and still have peace. Why? Because it's beyond my comprehension. He don't know where it's coming from. He don't know where it's coming from because it's coming from God. My God, he had a peace that surpasses all understanding. So even though he was cold, he was wet, he was smelling urine, he was not worried because he had the peace of God. Because the peace of God had regulated his mind. And it goes on to say that he was worried about nothing when he was praising God. And that can go for you too. You ain't worried about no bills, no health issues, no mental issues. Because you serve a God that if you include him, the peace, listen to that, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your minds and your hearts. You won't even know where it's coming from. But in a sticky situation, you will have the peace of God and you won't know because it's beyond your comprehension. Listen to that. Paul knew the remedy for a sound mind. Paul was a smart fellow. <laughs> Paul was smart and he knew that if you give it to God with a praise on it like it's already done, then you will get the results that you are looking for. But Paul had to build up to this. So if you read a couple of chapters back, Paul was kind of concerned here. So it can get kind of tricky, but I'm going somewhere. And I want you to lean in because it's going to get better. And in Philippians 2 and 28, it says, therefore, because see, we miss a lot of things when we're reading the text. It said, therefore, I have sent him the more eagerly that when you see him, you may rejoice and I may be, listen, and I may be less concerned about you. So what is that telling us? That two chapters over, Paul was concerned. Paul was having anxiety. Paul had sent one of his sons in the ministry to check on them, to let them know he is fine. It's going to get good. Listen, listen. But to also let them know 
that the son in the ministry he has sent to check on them is fine as well. Why would you do that, Paul? Because they were concerned about the son in the ministry as well. Because if you read in chapter 2, go back and read it. For the sake of time, I, I, can't, I can't keep going. But for the sake of time, I have to keep going. But in chapter 2, they was concerned about him because he was sick to the point of death. Paul sent him to let them know that God healed him. And the power and his power can contain, contain anything. So I got to thinking, why is he doing all of this? Start questioning the text. Paul knew they were anxious and worried. And that you must set your mind on the goodness of God. And he goes on to give some points on to what you should do. When you're trying to change your mind from anxiety to peace. <laughs> Listen to Paul. And this, this leads me into my next point. And this is going to be my final point because I said I was going to be 25 minutes. So I got to keep it right there. Anxi write this down. Anxi this, this, this is speaking to me. I, I'm, I'm feeling this thing. Anxiety leaves our mind when we focus on the good things. Hmm. Listen to that. Anxiety leaves our minds when we focus on the good things. Paul knew the remedy. Paul knew the remedy. Listen to Paul in verse number eight. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Listen to that. Dwell on these things. And the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Who I'm feeling this thing. I'm about to take off running in here. And the God of peace will be with you. Paul is saying. That if you refocus your mind on the goodness of God and all he has done in your life, then anxiety has no place on your mind. You have seen these things in me that I keep getting locked up for the sake of the gospel. But God still provides and cares for me in any situation. You've seen praises go up on my behalf. And blessings come down. As a matter of fact, walls come down. And this applies to all of us. We are always anxious about our outcome, about our outcomes and circumstances, when in everything we waste our time worrying because God, the God we serve, always come through. Listen to that. So I was riding in my car, and I want to put this in real quick. I was riding in my car and I was dealing with with some anxiety in this time. Um, so much so that I was driving and I thought that I was going to pass out because I was having anxiety attacks in my car. And I was like, Lord, 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 why, I, I hate feeling like this. I mean, it was, it was to the point that I didn't even want to drive. And people don't even know this. Nobody, nobody knows this but my wife. It was to the point that I didn't even want to drive. And God clearly spoke to me when I started asking him them questions. And he said, why are you so anxious about something that's not even happening? And that thing hit me like a, like a ton of bricks because I was worrying about something that didn't even happen because God was right there with me. And that may be us. We may get to a point to where we're worrying about stuff that's not even going to happen. We put our minds in a bad place when we do that. And, you know, we know that light bill is going to get paid, but we're going to worry about it. We know that we're going to get over that sickness, but we always worry about it. And even in this pandemic, we're worried about 
<laughs> we're worried about getting this COVID-19. And God is saying, I got you. Just focus on the good things. Remember my first topic was why am I so anxious? Why am I so anxious? Listen to Matthew. I'm going to jump over to Matthew chapter 6. I want you to go back and read this too. Matthew says, not to be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for the body as to what you will put on. Is life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor reap, nor gather in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them and you are not ain't, and are you not worth much more than they and who of you being worried can add a single hour to his life so why are we so anxious i tell you why we're always focusing on the worst that can happen when nine times out of 10, it's not even going to happen. So Paul is telling us, and if you read up to it, Paul was building his way up to this moment. And Paul had them got so much peace from God that he started saying that I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. He got bold in his faith. So at the end of the day, if we focus on the good things, then anxiety has no place in our minds. We have to refocus our minds. If you didn't get anything from this message tonight, I want you to get this, that you have to refocus your mind. Romans 12 says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you'll know what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight. Refocus your mind and anxiety will leave. That's my time. I hope you enjoyed this message. If you didn't get anything on tonight, I want you to get this, that anxiety has no place in a mind that's set on good. This is your boy Elder Bowie. Grace and peace.